All right, in this video, when I'm done, I've got a lock cylinder here. This is for a Ford. It's out of the 1980 to 1991 F-Series Ford trucks. May fit other years, may fit other vehicles, I don't know, but its part number is E5TZ11582A. I think I have a brand new one right here in this box. E5TZ11582A. Yes, that's right. Well, anyway, uh, it has no pins in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it so this key right here will fit. These keys are coded, so if they're lost, a locksmith can replace them without uh, having to search for a spare key or without having a reference as long as they have the code to go by. And look, if you look here on this index card, uh, you'll see I went ahead and looked it up. Uh, its code is FA1534. And what they will do is they will look it up in the book and they will have these measurements right here. These right here, you'll see it says um, key valley cut width. That is from that point to that point. If you take a caliper, just like this, I will go ahead and show you, make a demonstration here. If you take measure from that point, just like that, you'll get the width right there. And of course, that is 175 thousandths. Of course, I didn't hold it exactly quite right. Now, you have to be careful how you hold these, or else you'll get you'll get a bad measurement. But that's how they come up with this measurement. And starting from the farthest back closest to the head of the key, uh, you would say that would be uh, a valley number one, that is valley number two, this is valley number three, that's valley number four, and that's valley number five. And the inner cylinder here is a half of an inch in diameter. So what you will do is you will take, subtract this half of an inch, or subtract this uh, amount from one half of an inch, that's 500 thousandths, subtract 175 thousandths from 500 thousandths, and you will get 325 thousandths. That is how long of a pin that you will need. And I will be showing you how that works too also. And here's the pins. I've already went ahead to speed up the video. Uh, here's the bottom pins that goes into the cylinder. That is 325 thousandths. That's for this valley right here. And this one's 177 thousandths. That is for that valley right there. That is 275 thousandths. That is for this valley here, and so on and so forth. I'm probably moving so fast, and probably the camera doesn't focus in too well on these measurements. And over here, I've got the little retaining cover that goes on to the little slot where the pins go in. And these are the springs that hold pressure onto the springs. Or, or hold pressure on the pins, I'm sorry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull this apart. Take the old rusty pliers here. And there's a pin right here. What you want to do is you want to take and pop this out just a little bit. It won't come all the way out. And then you'll take and turn it. There's a little slot right here. It's not a very wide slot. Uh, you probably can't see it too well. It's a little skinny slot. You turn the cylinder all the way around until it lines up with where this pin is. Then it just slides right out. Then you may have to turn it a little bit. And you'll see I got two halves of the cylinder. Also, there is two pins in here in the top of this cylinder. Uh, be sure to not let those fall out because those actually gives the detents uh, on this top part or on the inner part so when you turn the ignition on and off you'll feel the actual click uh, that's where that comes from try to get my camera adjusted well anyway so here's I'm gonna go ahead and move this up uh oh that's not good
I'm always dropping things. Oh well. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take and slide the key in the. Uh oh. Oh yeah, by the way, that's an aluminum key. You probably don't see too many of those anymore. They made these in the late 70s from about 79 to about 84 or 85. Um, they were cheaper to produce, but the problem is they didn't last very long. If you look on eBay, you might still find some key blanks. So I've got this set up right here. So this is number five. So I'm going to start with this pin right here. It doesn't want to uh, cooperate with me. I will fix that. There we go. I had to tape it down. Well, anyway, here is the first pen that I'm going to use. And you want to be close, pay close attention to it. Uh, there's a little point and you can't see it too well but anyway it's pointed on on that end so just take it and drop it in the first hole right there and if you look it will come flush with the top of the cylinder and that's the way you want because if you get the key that doesn't fit it pushes the pin up too far and makes it and that's how it prevents it from turning so I'm going to take the second one and remember I went ahead and already measured these out to make sure that I had the right ones that fit to save time. There's the second one. There's the third one. There's the fourth one. And there is the fifth one, if it'll ever go. Sometimes you have to be careful. They make little tweezers to hold these with, actually, or to yeah, to put these little pins in with. And if you do a lot of this work, then I recommend getting them. So if you look, you'll see that all the pins, well, except for that one right there, sometimes it has to hold it just right. You'll see all the pins are even uh, with this, uh, with the inner barrel, as they call it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and snap the other part back on and the way you'll do that is you hold this where the pins are up and you want to take the outer part and you just want to spin it until it starts to go in and just keep turning it and keep turning it until it seats and you'll feel it click that's when you'll know it's on then still holding it up like that you want to take put your fingers over this or maybe even take and turn this back just a little bit you can take and push this little pin back in. That will lock the outer barrel back together. Now, what you will do, the way this works, or how these lock, if you have a short pin in the bottom, then you'll need a long pin at the top because that's how they work. Uh, where these two separate is how that spins. If you have a key that doesn't fit right where the valley may be deeper, then the top pin will go down into the bottom bar into the inner barrel and vice versa. That's what prevents them from turning. But I've already got this measured out too. See this had a long pin at the bottom so it's got a short one at the top. That one had a short one at the bottom so it gets a long one at the top. So on and so forth. So I'm going to take and go ahead and I'm going to start putting these in. And if you look, it's got a little recessed part on it. That's where the spring sets in. Be sure to put that little recessed part, or it's got the little turn, uh, it's a reduced shank size, you, you call it. Go ahead and make sure that you got those pointing up. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this in like that. And I'm going to put the next one in. And the next one. All right, now I've got all the pins in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it. Sometimes it's hard to turn. So I'm going to turn it until where the key will come out. Since we're done with that, we don't need the key anymore. So I'm going to go ahead, set it like this, and I'm going to go ahead and start putting the springs in it. It doesn't matter 
the springs they're all the same they're a little bitty be careful with them they will bounce all over the place and they're easy to lose there's no telling how many of these I've, I've lost by the way the water pump repair on the Taurus turned out to be a real success uh, I test drove it last night went to McDonald's seems like that's uh where a lot of test drives end up for McDonald's for coffee late night. Excellent choice. But it doesn't leak and it's turned out it runs real good. It had a check engine light issue. Evidently it wasn't warming up right. And that's fixed it. But anyway, back to the lock cylinder. You'll see all the springs are in. So what we are done, ready now, for now is we are ready to put this little retainer on. So as I'm going to take this, it's got a little channel that it snaps in. Be sure to push it in. Sometimes they're hard to put in. They just take, you just have to wrestle with them a little bit. Sometimes you take and push on them with a pair of pliers or something. I probably really don't really urge recommend doing this too much uh, hold on a minute I have to get it over here Yeah, you have to take needle nose pliers sometimes and squeeze them together because they weren't really meant to come apart we were just cheating a little bit and anyway now we have it together as you can see well I said it was I'm gonna have to actually take a little screwdriver and reform the edges but anyway as you can see now it's together it doesn't turn and I'm going to turn the camera this way and I'm going to hold it like this I'm going to get the key and slide the key in it and you'll see that it spins as it doesn't and I will go down here and I will get a key that we know that doesn't fit slide it in and we see that it doesn't work so there you have it, a Ford lock cylinder that we have repinned, or you might say we have keyed. And I thank you for watching. Oh, by the way, uh, I bear no responsibility to this for legal purposes. They kind of, this is a hard issue. But anyways, I uh, thank you for watching.